This story is called Jaws of Steel. At 29 Acacia Road lives Eric, the schoolboy who lives an exciting double life. For when he eats a banana, an amazing transformation occurs. He becomes Banana Man, ever alert for the call to action. Accompanying Banana Man on his adventures is his feathered friend, Crow. Crow never gets in a flap and is always on hand to help and encourage. Well, Banana fans, no matter what he tried, the evil General Blight was unable to triumph over the greatest crime fighter of them all, Banana Man. So he sent for his henchmen to attend a secret meeting in a workman's hut in the high street. Dr. Gloom, the weatherman, Zorg, king of the Nurks, and the heavy mob, Eddie the Gent, Morris the Muscle, Fingers and Rembrandt. When they were all safely inside, General Blight addressed the collection of crooks. Men, we've all had a go at eliminating Banana Man, and we have failed. Scruggy, Scruggy, Scruggy. 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 You've done best, Binky. I know, I know. Even I, General Blight, have had some uh, difficulty. That's why I've hired a real cold-blooded professional to do the job for us. Just wait until you meet. Come in. The door was flung open wide, and in stepped a little old lady with her knitting. Hello, lads. Gentlemen, meet the deadliest assassin of them all, Auntie. <laughs> and about time, too. Where have you been? I've been waiting in the Auntie room. Sometime later, banana fans, Eric was leaving his house. It's just as well to be prepared for trouble. I'll have a banana. Oops, it's gone into Dad's car. Eric dived into the little car and found the banana. He ate it at once and, in a flash of light, he was transformed into Banana Man. Unfortunately, while there was plenty of room in the little car for a small chap like Eric, it was a bit of a tight fit for the muscular... Banana Man. With his head sticking out of the roof, arms out of the windows and legs out of the floor, Banana Man was wearing the car like an overcoat. <laughs> How about that, fans? A motorised pedestrian. But to the traffic warden who spotted him, he was a car, and he was standing on a double yellow line. You think I like him now? Do you think I like him? You ask me if I like him. That's it. I say no. That's what I say. I say no. I don't like him. That's it. People like you. You got to. Put your gun on the line. I'm gonna put your ticket on the line. I don't need to put your gun on the line. Of course. You're only doing your job. Just then, a steel cable with a large magnet on the end dropped towards our metal encased hero and lifted him upwards. Oh! Oh! The cable was attached to a mobile crane, and at its controls was... Auntie. You're just in time, folks. Banana Man's going to drop in unexpectedly for a smashing time. <laughs> she drove off to a scrapyard, where Banana Man was clamped to a clanking conveyor belt taking wrecked cars towards the gaping metal jaws of a massive mechanical car cruncher. Banana Man's heart sank as he saw the first car in line being spat out of the other end of the machine as a small cube of squashed metal. Just then, Crow arrived. Oh! Hey, what's the trouble, boss? I can't move, Crow. There's a woman operating that crane, and I'm in her power. Pinned to this conveyor belt. What a way to go, old pal. Into those jaws of steel. No, no, no. Do not give up, Big B. She cannot hold you. And remember, you have the strength of 20 women. Oh, yes. 20 big women. Banana Man took a deep breath, expanding his great chest and flexing his mighty muscles. 
The car he wore ripped open as if made of paper and the clamp burst apart. Banana Man was free. But as he strode off, he was watched from a high rooftop by the deadly auntie. And can you guess what she had up there with her? A piano. In a few seconds, my dears, the flavor of the month will be squashy bananas. Auntie put her shoulder to the piano and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it to the very edge of the roof. It toppled over and hurtled downwards, straight towards Banana Man. Oh, it's a 500 weight piano. He dived aside in the nick of time. Unfortunately, he hadn't spotted the piano stool following on behind. Who dropped that, Crow? I don't know, boss. Maybe it was a stool pigeon? <laughs> Banana Man sat down at the piano and began to play a tune. He forgot, of course, that the piano and the stool had wheels, and they were at the top of a hill. They all began to roll down the hill, slowly at first, then quickly gathering speed. Passers-by didn't know whether to jump for safety or stick their fingers in their ears. It was Police Chief O'Reilly on traffic duty who put a stop to it. Banana Man, was that you playing the piano? Yes, it was, Chief. What did you think of it? Terrible. Oh. I think you'd better accompany me to the station. <laughs> Auntie was not at all pleased. 